Do you know, in 1945, I think the ma great majority of the world thought that the idea of geosynchronous satellites and, and communication really was science fiction. And yet, it, it clearly wasn't, and people like you understood it. Uh, are there concepts today that you think people are regarding as really far out science fiction, but, but that you think are going to come upon us much more rapidly than we think? Well, I don't have any uh, specific bright ideas, and if I did, I wouldn't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> but what I do think I uh, take seriously, now and every last, is so-called cold fusion. I think there's no doubt now that's for real. It may not be cold fusion, it may be warm fission or something totally different. But there's just been a report from government laboratories in the United States uh, confirming mm -hmm. anomalous energy production. It's all on the web. And, I mean, if this is well, I'm sure that the reports are genuine. They're being, you know, looked into very carefully. Now, the various possibilities arise. Um, it may only be a laboratory curiosity. Um, it may not be possible to scale it up. But remember, the first nuclear fission was a laboratory curiosity. And was that mm -hmm. scaled up? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If that is the case, and it can be scaled up, it's going to be the most revolutionary thing since the discovery of fire. It'll change our society completely. Uh, if we can make portable power units, that's the end of grids, uh, the end of the oil age as we know it now, but oil will always be valuable as a petrochemical. Mm -hmm. But it will be a colossal change, you know, essentially free energy. I said somewhere a few years ago, um, uh, during I think one of the, the last oil crises, you know, when the price of oil went up tenfold or whatever, yeah. I said um, the age of cheap energy is over. The age of free energy is still 50 years ahead. <laughs> <laughs> and that may be right. <laughs> Uh, you've known a lot of people in your career, I, I'm, I'm sure, and you've already reminisced about some of them. But are there some uh, that, that are particularly interesting in terms of your interaction with them and the things you'd like to share with us that you think our audience would be interested in knowing about? Well, there's so many people. You know, of course, um, one of my active interests is underwater, so I've known them at the Cousteau's. And um, I always remember a dinner party uh, a birthday party for Jacques Cousteau, and uh, Jean Michel was also there. This was in the Beverly Hilton, I think, or the Beverly Wilshire, I can't remember which. And um, I was standing with the Cousteaus and saying, you know, well, by the way, who's throwing this party? They went upon a tall gentleman next to me. He said, I am. My name is Ted Turner. <laughs> so I probably <laughs> said, then you owe me 10% of your income, you know. <laughs> That <laughs> wasn't very tactful. <laughs> I'm sure there are many other people I've met in, the, in my rather long lifetime. I've um, you know, met, uh, met the Prince of Wales. Oh, yes, my God. And uh, Diana, Princess of Wales, she was sitting next to me when we screened 2010. That's right, yes. You know, um, I appear in 2010 for about two microseconds sitting on a park bench mm -hmm. in um, front of the White House. And, you know, and uh, Princess Diana was sitting next to me and she spotted it was me. And we'd only met uh, that a few minutes before. I was, I was very <laughs> impressed. It was a, a great tragedy, yeah. Um, I met, um, I, there's a picture you might show in a minute of me with. <coughs> Patrick Stewart and, and Darth Vader. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> quite a, and of course, uh, Neil Armstrong, the picture is together there. Mm -hmm. I met most of the astronauts now. Yeah. And, uh, and some of the cosmonauts, particularly Alexei Leonov, who's a lovely guy. In fact, I've been in his apartment in Moscow. Mm -hmm. Oh, and that's and quite, a quite a collection of celebrities that you've come across, uh, yeah, or yeah. have come across I you. I have a book there with um, letters, a uh, file there with uh, VVIP letters, you know, that I, part of my ego chamber. 
yesterday there was an announcement of another person who was going to become a space tourist and go to the space station, courtesy of the uh, Russians. Uh, uh, how do you feel about that? Are you jealous that you're, you uh, not never really. had that opportunity? <laughs> not really. I've been in space and mentally and much further than the, the, the uh, gentleman concerned who's a South African actually, he paid $20 million, $20 million uh, and he made all his money on the internet, I believe. Yes, yes. Which is interesting. Why what are you paying me for this, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> Our best wishes and all the goodwill in the world from the entire membership of the Internet Society. Arthur, I'd like to thank you very much for uh, doing this. Um, just listening to you, your reminiscences, your wisdom, your insights, and your humor. And my uh, modesty, too. And your modesty, too, of course. Uh, has just been absolute a dream come true for me. Thank you, Will. And I... I just want to thank you again. Well, I look forward to seeing the final, you know, the director's cut, or whatever you call it, when you finish, when we wrapped it up. Uh, on behalf okay, of the internet. Thank you all for doing it. And I say I hope you had some film in the camera. <laughs>